Hello everyone, and welcome back to Soccer Unboxing. So welcome to my updated pre-orders list for 2024 and into 2025. Um, this is my third time recording this video because unfortunately just a lot of stuff happened to me. Um, I do have some regrets, so I'll mention them in this video that I'm most likely going to be cancelling. Um, also, I will be mentioning like some resin figures towards the very end because again, I don't know release dates, I'm no expert on the subject, so I'll get into those at the tail end of the video. So without further ado, let us get started. So going into the cancellations I have, which are a bunch, but I feel like for these I have no regrets with canceling, thankfully. Um, I'll start off with the first one, which is a posable figure, so like a Figma, but it's not made by Figma, and that is the Honkai Impact 3rd Rita Roseweiss um, Arctech 1 8th Umbral Rose version by Apex. Now, again, I'm a sucker for scythe figures, however, I just really don't know this character. Um, it is roughly $100, maybe even a little bit less than that, but since I don't know the character, I'm just gonna cancel this figure. So, just to help lower my August pre-orders a little bit. Um, I think the scythe is beautiful, but again, I just don't know the character to warrant picking her up. After that, jumping into September of 2024, we have a figure that was a re-release and it was on my wish list, but again, I don't know the character, and that is the Shingeki no Bahamut Dark Dragoon Forte 1-8 scale figure by Kotobukiya. I really love this character design and just I am very surprised with how cheap it is. Um, I think she's close to like a hundred dollars. Um, again, I feel like there's just a lot of detail on this figure. The lances look awesome, her armor, and just I think she looks amazing, and I feel like it's a pretty reasonable price, but again, I just don't know the character just to spend that money for her. So yes, I'm um, definitely going to be canceling this one in September. After that, going into October, which probably has the most expensive figure that I'm going to be canceling, and that is the Plantopia Alpha figure by Good Small Company. Now, I love, of course, Sakura-themed figures, and this one is one of those, however, it is extremely expensive. On the Good Small Global website, it is $260 total, that's with shipping included. And I I just feel like I fell out of love with the figure. Um, still very pretty, still is based off a gorgeous original illustration, but I feel like $260 is a lot and I just can't swallow that pill. Um, I did contact Good Small Global. Um, I know Good Smile US is like no longer, um, you know, canceling is no longer allowed. I'm not too sure on the global end, so I'm really hoping that they can cancel this order for me. If not, I'm hoping to sell my pre-order to someone who really wants this figure, so we'll see how that goes later down the line. And then jumping into February of 2025, where we have two figures I'm going to be canceling. Um, both are kind of meant to be a set together, so they are the Azure Lane Ying Sui. 1-7 Snowy Pines Warmth, and the uh, Azure Lane Chow Ho 1-7 Plum Blossoms Illumination figures by Hobby Max. I pre-ordered these figures probably back in like what could have been like late 2022, early 2023, and I'm like, oh, I have time because these come out in February 2025, and now I no longer want these figures. Um, I do have these characters um, that you know, were made by Neon Max. I'll put them up on screen of what I'm talking about. But yeah, I have those versions of these characters and I'm perfectly fine with these. Um, I do think these are gorgeous though, just the way everything is draping and just the set piece. But again, I haven't played Azure Lane. I don't really know much about these characters and I think it's pretty stupid that I pre-ordered these um, to get like another version of these characters. So yeah, definite cancellation for these two. So now we're going into my updated pre-orders, starting in July of 2024, where I have one Nendroid ordered, and that is the Hatsune Miku and Rabbit Yukin Snow Winter Delicacy version by Good Small Company. And of course, I do want to pre-order the Snow Miku Nendroids. They are Good Small online shop exclusives, and I think that's the reason why they tend to go up in price a little bit. Um, so I just want to pre-order them for retail price, even though they are still Quite a little bit expensive, but yes, I love this design. It's a very comfy, cozy, uh, food-themed figure, and I really like Miku's twin tails once again. The pearlescent finished at the end is very nice, 
And I also have to give compliments to the Snowmiku boxes as well. I feel like there's just so much nice detail in them and they really, you know, make this figure like a little bit more worth the price, I guess. But yeah, I'm just excited for this figure. I did pay for her already, so I'm looking forward to just add her to my Snowmiku Nendoroid collection. After that, we have a re-release of a pretty old Nendoroid. Um, but I picked it up to kind of go with my other version of this character, and that is the Spice and Wolf Hollow Nendoroid by Good Small Company. Um, I think at one point this Nendoroid was pretty pricey, uh, but yeah, they're doing a re-release and it's on the cheaper side. I think this is going to be under $40. Um, I pre-ordered it off of Ami Ami, but I think this is a very cute Nendoroid. Um, again, I have the Nendoroid doll version of Hollow, and it'd be kind of nice just to swap the parts with that one. Um, however, this is kind of the older anime design. That's the only thing with the face and the hair is different. But I think it's going to be like a nice like supplementary Nendoroid um, to go with my Nendoroid doll and just to have a little bit more customization with that figure. And then the other two figures I pre-ordered for August of 2024. Um, both are kind of meant to go together and these are going to be my first pop-up parade large figures and that is the Vocaloid, Kagamine, Len, and Rin, Bring It On versions by Good Small Company. I just really love the way that these two look with the design, the details like on the hair, and I think these two look very cool as a set. The song that they're based on is an absolute banger. So yeah, I'm very excited just to see Papa Parade Larges in person because again, I don't collect Papa Parades, but I've heard good things about the large versions of these figures. After that, we're moving into November where I do have one figure pre-ordered and it is a Binding Bunny. And this is the uh, Binding Creator's Opinion Catherine White 1 4th Bunny version by Binding. Um, again, another gorgeous bunny that was illustrated by Sakia Mama. So um, this one was a no-brainer pre-order for me just to go with Mio Blue and Caroline Yuri. Again, gorgeous design. I love that pop of blue on that flower in her hair the pose, the um, pearlescent outfit she has. Just absolutely stunning. Again, I love Sakia Mama's character designs and I just had to put her in for the collection. Now, um, this was pretty much my first pre-order off of the native website. So they do have a flat rate shipping, even though it's like not like good smile shipping, it's a little bit more expensive, but at least I can now order from them to get, you know, that you know, flat rate shipping cost, and also the, you know, bonus postcard as well. Um, I stupidly ordered this off of Ami Ami and then I changed my mind and did, you know, native. So I do plan on canceling that Ami Ami order unless someone wants it. Um, definitely let me know if you do. Um, just so Ami Ami doesn't get mad at me for canceling figures for this year. Now we're moving into December of 2024, my birthday month. Um, I do have a couple that I pre-ordered for this month. The first one I'll be going into is the Hatsune Miku 1 7th Shimeon Maifu version. I absolutely love this Miku design. It is absolutely gorgeous. I love the sculpt work. And I feel like from these promo pictures, it translates pretty well from that original illustration. Um, it's just very gorgeously colored and just the concept and the instrument looks fantastic as well. Um, I thought this was going to be a little cheaper, but it is, you know, quite pricey, but I just adore this design so much, so I'm very much looking forward to her in the future. Next up, we have a Nendroid doll. Um, I was contemplating on whether I wanted to pre-order this or not because it's another Snow Miku Nendroid, um, but this is the re-release of the Nendroid doll for Snow Miku. Again, I love Nendroid dolls, the clothing, all that. She looks super cute and very comfy and cozy. Um, I think this was quite expensive in the aftermarket, so that's why I pretty much just jumped on to get it for retail price. Um, but yeah, pretty nice Nendoroid doll, and I am hoping that they will re-release that Sakura Miku Nendoroid doll, because that one is also pretty expensive. And now we have yet another Nendoroid doll. Um, this was kind of an instant pre-order for me as well, because I you know, love this character. This is my husbando, of course, and that is the Fate Grand Order Oberon Nendoroid doll. Pretender, refreshing summer prince version, so Oberon's summer outfit. Um, it's not my favorite outfit of his, but this is my man and I just had to pick him up. 
So yeah, very cute. Um, I do like he has the ice cream, some sunglasses, the sandals, and I don't know. Again, I just love that he's getting more figures, of course. Um, and also the hair sculpt is different. He does kind of have it tied up in the back. So yes, just another Oberon figure to add to my growing Oberon collection. Now moving to the last figure in December. I wish this one was kind of into 2025, but um, this one I just had to pre-order because I've been awaiting this original illustration being made into a figure. And that is the Binding Creators Collection Sarah 1 4th Red Queen version. I lost my freaking mind when this went up for pre-order. No announcement, no prototype or anything. They just dropped the fully colored version for pre-order. And needless to say, I'm I'm extremely happy with this Binding Bunny. I love the way that she looks in the promo pictures. Um, this is definitely going to go nicely next to the Chris Aqua Blue that I have. Because um, again, it's illustrated by D Smile. And I do have the original artwork in the D Smile art book. But yeah, the metallic red bunny suit, the scepter is a nice little prop to have. The way her hair just drapes to the floor and just pools at the bottom. This is probably going to be maybe one of my favorite Binding Bunnies. Um, this one is definitely going to get a review. Um, I've been really behind on some of my figure reviews, but I just, I think she deserves it. So, um, Binding has been kind of delaying their figures a bit. Um, I'm kind of hoping this one gets pushed at least into January of um, 2025. Because again, December is a little bit hectic, but yeah, I, I just had to prove to her because I think her design is absolutely amazing. Now we're jumping into January of 2025, which I do have a couple of figures from. Thankfully, as most of them are pretty inexpensive or a little bit smaller. The first one we have that recently went up is the Eve and Gary Chibi figure by Goodsville Art Shanghai. Um, again, I love Eeb the game. I think this is a very cute diorama piece and Gary at least gets some sort of figure. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cute. Um, it does come with a bonus, like acrylic, um, frame of the original illustration, which, you know, if you get off of Good Smile, which I recommend. And yeah, I think it's pretty cute overall. Maybe could have been cheaper. Um, I looked how tall this figure is and it says it's roughly 5 inches, which isn't super big. Um, and this is like about $70, so maybe it could have been cheaper, but again, I love the Eep series, so I'm quite excited for this very cute diorama figure. Next up, we have another Ninjaroid to go into my Fluffy Land series of Ninjaroids, so on the furry side, I'm not a furry, but I think the designs are absolutely adorable. And that is the Caesar Nendroid by Good Small Art Shanghai. Again, I think the sculpting on these Nendroids is fantastic and the eyes very striking and vibrant in color. And yeah, very cute. Again, I just want to add this to my collection to go with um, River and Oslo, who I do have sitting on my shelf right there. I think this is going to be just a very cute series of Nendroids collect. So um, I'm excited for more in the future. After that, another in the Mushroom Girls line of figures, which I definitely plan on collecting. Again, illustrated by Star Shadow Magician, one of my favorite artists in recent times. And we have the number five Manin Take, one-to-one -one scale by Reverse Studio, whose quality is excellent for the price point I feel for these figures. Um, so I'm excited for her. Very cute design. I love the metallic outfit. She does have heterochromia, and I do like that in some character designs. And again, the base is very cute. And I'm just hoping the one thing I've just struggled with assembling these like figures. So I, you know, hope she's not too difficult to put together. But yeah, another exciting one to add to my growing mushroom girl collection. And now moving on to the last figure for January of 2020. Five. So this one was an instant pre-order for me. I'm again a sucker for Sakura and we have the Vocaloid Hatsune Miku 1 6th Hanami Outfit version by Good Small Company. I freaking love this design so much. This outfit, this the twin tails, it's just so good. Again, I have the Ninja doll version of this figure. Um, a lot of people were surprised thinking why wasn't this a scale figure first. But hey, we got the scale figure at the end of the day. I'm just, oh, I, I love her so much. This is absolutely gorgeous. And the price tag of this figure was not what I was expecting. 
So she is $135.99 USD, base price, the $18 shipping on Good Small Global for $153.99, which I have to say isn't so bad considering that this is also a one-sixth figure and they, those can get like a little more expensive. So yes, I am very, very excited for this Miku. I wish there was a pre-order bonus with this, like the original illustration included, but I'm just happy working the figure. And also, apparently on my figure collection, there is over a thousand orders for this figure, so a lot of people are hyped for her. So yeah, I'm very, very excited for this Sakura Miku figure in the future. And now we're going into February of 2025, where it's a pretty stacked month. Um, I have two figures that I ordered for the month. The first one I'll be going into is the Arknights W17 Wanted version by Apex. I really love Apex's quality, and I feel like for the price point, it's not too bad. Um, I think they're a Chinese brand, so maybe it's not the best idea to get them off of Ami Ami and get them elsewhere. But yeah, I really love the design of this figure, how she's just coming out of the hat, the very glossy outfit, and the glossy and sparkly boots. And I do kind of like her face, the eyes look very nice, and definitely gives off very much um, Persona 5 Phantom Thief vibes, but yeah, I really like this design. Um, this one is like, I'm in between, I'll keep her for now, but I haven't played Arknights, so, you know, we'll see later down the line. I just don't want Ami Ami to completely, like, cancel my account because I've just been, you know, canceling the other two big figures in February. And the other figure I've been really anticipating finally getting released, and that is the False Lander Ronin by uh, Katie Cole or Kadokawa 1-7 um, scale figure. I love Ronin's design. It's probably one of my favorite of the False Lander girls. Um, surprisingly, this one's not being made by Wing, who did the other False Lander figures. I don't know why they decided to switch manufacturers, but so far, sculpt looks excellent. The, you know, she's got the big katana, the hat, and yeah, I just really love this character design. Um, I did pre-order this off of the Good Small um, Global website. They had her up for on there, just for the flat rate shipping. Roughly $160, so a little bit less expensive, or a little bit more expensive, I should say, than the Hanami Miku. But yeah, I really love Ronin's design, so I'm excited to see her in the future. Hello everyone, so voice over Sakura here, going to be jumping in a couple of times throughout this video. Um, just because in the time it takes me to edit this video, I have pre-ordered some new figures and items. So yeah, so I'm going to try my best to go in order of release date, so let's get started with the first one. So also another thing to add to my February 2025 orders, it's not a figure but a plushie. Um, I just thought I'd talk about it, and that is the Fate Grand Order Oberon Chakoto Punito um, plushie by Good Small Company. So another thing to add to my Oberon collection. I think he just looks absolutely adorable. I love the way he looks. Not super big. Um, he's roughly seven inches tall. But yeah, um, just another little item to add to my Oberon collection. And now we're moving into March of 2025, where I have two figures pre-ordered. The first one is the Fate Grand Order Melusine 1 7 Lancer 2nd Ascension by QuezQ, who is a manufacturer I really don't have a lot of figures from, but I heard pretty great things about them. But yeah, I, you know, love Melusine's design. Um, I don't want- the 3rd Ascension looks cool, but it's a lot, definitely. So yeah, I'll settle for the 2nd Ascension for the time being. Um, there's also the Good Smile Ruler version of her, where she's in the swimsuit, which I really like, so, um, I might be at a toss-up once that figure goes up for pre-order. Um, because yeah, I love Melusine's design, I like how this one, you know, the outfit looks great with the shading. Um, uh, this is just pulled from her Second Ascension artwork, so it's nothing too fancy in terms of, like, pose and such. Um, it's nice that they included the little veil that she has as well as an extra accessory, but yeah. I really like Melusine as a character, it's a, she's a very good servant in game, so I'm excited to pick her up in the future. And then the last figure I talked about um, in a community pose actually, that was revealed at Anime Expo, and I just really love the way this figure looks, and that is the Ring Yamamura Sadako Horror by Shoujo 1-7 scale figure by Kotobukiya. 
Um, I just really love the way that she's posed just floating over the tapes and how it's actual like tape that you can just put on her foot and just yeah her sculpting looks amazing and I, I don't know I really just love the way that this figure looks visually so I did manage to get her off of Nin and Game. I think I was like the last one to get her before they closed the pre-orders. It was very limited. Um, so I'm gonna get probably that extra bonus faceplate. Um, this figure by default comes with two faceplates. One where her hair is just completely covering her face and one where you can see her eye. Um, it's just, I don't know, something about it looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, the dress itself looks like, you know, it's gonna be a clear material as well. Um, Nin Nin Game, it is, at least right now with shipping included, like $160 total, which isn't too bad, thankfully. Um, and this figure I think retails for closer to like $100, which I think is, you know, crazy. Um, I think the Horror by Shoujo line tends to be on the cheaper side, which is nice, but yeah. Um, I'm excited just to see the quality of this figure, um, yeah, and I'm just excited for her in general. And now, one more figure from merch of 2025, which is a Nendorite that literally went up for pre-order as I was editing this video. And that is the Fate Grand Order Oberon 3rd Ascension version by Orange Rouge. And needless to say, this Nendorite is in quite hot water already. Um, a lot of people are kind of complaining about him. I'm definitely going to complain about him, but let us start with the very few positives of this Nendoroid. So the first positive I have is that I do like the sculpt of him overall, the way the hair looks, the wings, um, his cape, his clawed hand and feet. I think that all looks very nice. And I do like the facial expressions that he comes with. So yes, he comes with three different facial expressions, which is a straight face, an implying face, and a dumbfounded face. Um, I'd say that they're not too bad. I'm pretty happy with his different facial expressions for this Nendoroid. And now it's time to just bash the ever-living hell out of this Nendoroid because the overall outcome and what he comes with is absolutely disappointing, if I'm being at all honest. So now we're going on to the quote-unquote accessories for this Nendoroid. Um, I do exclude hands and feet. Um, when I say accessories, I am talking about weapons or little props that come with the Nendoroid. So the only accessory that he has is the little roly-poly attack that he does in the game. I do not understand why they do not have the scythe with this Nendoroid. I am so disappointed that they didn't add that accessory for him. Like, have they not seen the animations in this game? So yeah, I just am disappointed with the lack of accessories. I, again, very missed opportunity from them. And then the other major gripe that people have that is just very lazy is just the overall lack of paint details on the Nendoroid compared to the promo image. So I'm going to put the two images side by side and we're going to do a little spot the difference. So the first thing is that on one part of his cape there is the missing white dots on the Nendoroid. Um, the inside of the cape they just threw on one flat color with some just dots compared to the sort of galaxy look I feel like it has to the inside of his cape. There's also those extra little insect wings that are not present on the Nendoroid. There's a little fur top. They just only painted a few spots blue and called it a day. It just looks so, so low effort. I do not love the way that looks. And then the pants that are kind of supposed to have this sort of blue um, airbrush look to them on top of the black. They just painted it black and called it a day. And then the clawed hands and feet, they're supposed to have some blue outlining to them, but they just, again, left it black and called it a day. And yeah, I feel like really the only shading on this Nendoroid is going to be his hair and then also his white outfit. And that's really about it, unfortunately. And I completely understand that Nendoroids are very small figures, of course, and it can be very hard to get some very nice sculpting and paint detail in there, but they just really have to ask it at the end of the day and just rushed it out just to make a quick book out of a pretty popular FGO character. And it's like, why even bother showing us that very detailed promo image when you're not going to apply it to the actual Nendoroid? And yet, I decided to order the Nendoroid anyway, 
and I ordered two of him because I do want to do my own custom paintwork on him because of how lacking he's looking in that department. But who knows, Good Small might listen to our pleas and um, fix him up, add those extra little details and accessories for him. We'll have to see later down the line. And then, you know, if that happens, I'm just going to give away the second Oberon Nendroid in a giveaway. So yeah, they just overall did my man dirty. Um, so I'm actually excited just to do that custom paint job on him because he definitely deserves to look better than what they're showing us right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and end the video right there. Um, I don't want this video to be super long. I was thinking about putting it all in one part, but then it would be over 50 minutes, so yes. I'm gonna end part one right here. Stay tuned for part two, which should be uploaded shortly after this video. So thank you all so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you would like to, of course, feel free to take the time to subscribe to my channel to see what other figure and merch related shenanigans I get into next. So I hope you all have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or night wherever you are, and take it easy. Goodbye.